atomic absorption spectroscopy. This is the new technique for determination of metal ion concentration directly. This is the absorption technique. technique. Light absorbs and by the absorption we can determine the amount. But it is atomic absorption when the atom or it goes to the higher energy level in the atomic level then it absorbs the radiation and then we can determine with the help of absorption how much light get absorbed on the basis of what is the concentration that can be calculated by using the atomic absorption spectroscopy. Now in this technique we have to see the introduction of this technique theory of this AS into instrumentation part measurement of absorbance of atomic species interferences observed in the measurement qualitative and quantitative applications of AIS and standard addition method. Now this method was discovered by Alan Walsh in 1953. He worked on the determination of elemental analysis present in the solution. Then he, dis he was discovered. When the molecule or atom goes to the higher energy level, it has a tendency to absorb the radiation in the specific wavelength. With this principle, the for higher energy level, the molecule or atom when heated or electrically heated or in the flame it is heated, then it goes to the excited state and at that level he absorb the radiation with the same frequency or wavelength and the remaining light get transmitted on falls on the detector. From that he can calculate how much light get absorbed. It is depend on how many number of atoms are present in the solution. When a beam of light falls on the atom in a gaseous state, it absorbs a specific wavelength of light only. The remaining light get transmitted to the detector. In his experiment, the absorption and emission when light goes to the, the atom goes to the higher energy level to the excited state and it remains there at that time he absorbed the radiation and therefore atomic absorption spectroscopy worked on this principle. But when it reaches to the excited state and it come back to the ground state then it emit the radiation therefore emission spectroscopy is dependent on this. Now in atomic absorption spectroscopy it is based on absorption of light by free metallic ions. Now in this case what happened? The whatever the light get absorbed by the molecule or atom it is you know, given in terms of the V. V is the frequency of absorb by the uh, uh, atom. Now V is equal to pi e raised to 2 upon mc into nf where pi e mc and f are the constant but n is the number of atoms present in the vicinity of the radiation and V is the absorbed frequency of the light and therefore whatever the light is absorbed by the at atom is depend on how many number of atoms are present in the vicinity of the beam and therefore V is directly proportional to N from this equation we can calculate easily the how many number of atoms present in the solution. Now in this experiment what happened the principle is that the whatever the solution uh, metal ion present in the solution that is aspirated into the instrument then it get converted into the small droplet by evaporation then it becomes a solid uh, form then after vaporization it converted into the gaseous state then after dissociation the gaseous state the metal gases metal ion gases are there and then at the atomic level they absorb the radiation and then the remaining radiation get measured and therefore what how much light get absorbed it is measured by using this technique and from that we can calculate how many number of atoms are present in the solution. Now in this technique uh, the instrumental part is the first is a light source which is kept in the instrument here. Then atomizer it contain the nebulizer and burner and after that there is a monochromator and detector and recorder system. Now the instrument is looking like this. In this case what happened the first is the source. Now if we open this then it is a source it is a halo cathode lamp then after that the uh, radiations are flowing through the flame where flame and the atomizer atomizer is kept here here 
the atomizer the work of the atomizer is uh, the radiation uh, absorbed by the atom the atom should be transferred into the atomic level therefore burner is there and nebulizer system is there nebulizer controls the uh, procedure what is the ratio of fuel then what is the uh, what is the amount of fuel what is the amount of oxidant what is the amount of solution should be aspirate and transfer into the flame it is controlled by the nebulizer and atomized uh, in the burner the burner uh, there is a flame and after that there is a monochromator and then the recorder system and this is the detector photomultiplier tube detector is used and then uh, recorder system in this way the parts that is the five parts of the instruments the whatever the exhaust is there it can be removed by using this exhaust fan that is a chimney now first part is the light source now this light source uh, hollow cathode lamp is used this hollow cathode lamp containing the metal ion metal uh, cathode now when it is connected to the instrument then this metal, metal uh, emits the radiation uh, intense radiation and passing through this window it is a quartz window and uh, the neon and argon gas is uh, either neon or argon gas is kept uh, under high or low pressure and this is connected uh, to the anode and cathode uh, intense color uh, intense uh, intense uh, in a constant intensive light is emitted emitted by this metal ion and uh, it act as a light source in the as now when we connect the one single lamp then we can determine the only one metal for example suppose this is a copper uh, cathode is there we can determine the cathode from the solution for this purpose we require the number of uh, lamps are there uh, on this basis these lamps are connected on the belt uh, to the instrument and then uh, from the uh, solution we can determine the number of ions the here condition is that which type of atom is we have to determine that lamp is must be available in the instrument in this way the hollow cathode lamp uh, works now uh, next next uh, step is the nebulizer now in the nebulizer what happen the whatever the solution get aspirated into the uh, atomizer this solution in the liquid form must be converted into the very small droplet that is a fog and then it is allowed to pass through the flame now this is a fog in this fog, uh, way the solution transfer into the nebulizer and it converted into the fog it is a very small droplet it can help to immediately convert it into the ma metal ion into the uh, atomic level that is a uh, transfer into the mist the next is the uh, in the atomizer that is a burner now in the burner what happen the uh, uh, two types of burners are used total consumption burner is one type and another is the premix burner now in total consumption burner the name itself giving the meaning that is consumption of the whole solution is allowed to transfer into the uh, burner and uh, then what happened the fuel oxidant we have to maintain the uh, ratio in the in a such a way that what we require the uh, temperature of the flame now if air and uh, lpg gas that is propane is mixed together we can reach up to this 1500 degrees celsius if air and acetylene gas is mixed then we can use uh, we can uh, reach to the 2000 to 2500 degrees celsius and if we use uh, uh, we have to detect the hard metals then we have to use the nitrous oxide oxidant and acetylene uh, fuel and we have to maintain the proper ratio to get the 3000 degrees celsius and at this level the uh, metal ion can transfer into the uh, uh, flame uh, at the atomic level and then they can be absorbed now this is the total consumption burner now another burner is a no, premix burner now in premix burner what happened the initially what happened uh, uh, in total consumption burner all three factors are transfer here and at the uh, flame they mix together but in this case what happened initially the uh, fuel solution and oxidant they mix together by with the help of this chopper and they mix together properly and uh, then allow to transfer to the flame here uh, resistors are there now formation of the very uh, fine droplet that is in terms of fog and this fog is allowed to only pass to the burner and the about 70% of the solution get transfer or uh, drain out from the this burner but uh, the uh, efficiency of this burner is increased and we get the perfect analysis with the help of this uh, type of uh, burner in case of the total consumption burner whole solution is allowed to pass therefore it affects on the temperature also but here it does not affect on the temperature in constant temperature uh, we will get the uh, 
benefit for the adsorption and therefore we get the perfect result now the next part is the monochromator the monochromator may be a prism or grating can be used uh, in this instrument now this uh, instrument uh, in this instrument the monochromator is used after the uh, flame now what happen uh, when we are reaching to the 1500 degree celsius temperature now this temperature is for one metal to reach the excited state but this temperature may be used uh, you uh, utilize for another metal which has a excited state uh, uh, just only the 1000 degree celsius and therefore it cross the excited state it again come back to the ground state it emit the radiation now whatever the emitted radiations are there they are also allowed to pass through the detector but there is should be a filter that is a monochromator it only select the whatever the radiation coming from the source not from the emitted from the flame and therefore monochromator is attached here in the instrument after the uh, flame and therefore either prism or grating uh, any uh, monochromator can be used in the instrument the next part is the detector after monochromator the radiations are falls on the detector generally uh, in as the photo multiplier tube is used as a detector now photo multiplier tube what happen very trace amount of uh, metal ions are there they absorb the radiation very small or even that higher concentration very small amount of photon falls on the detector now here what happen on the uh, in the uh, photo multiplier tube the dynodes are there now uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 such type of dynodes are there this type of tube is there or it may be a spherical uh, size uh, the tube is there now in this photo tube what happened the photon falls on the detector it transfer on the first dynode and immediately it multiplies multiplies maybe in the two two digit or uh, two times or maybe a three times maybe four times it depend on what material we are coated on the dynode now in this way the uh, continuously multiplies how many dynodes are there in this way they can be absorbed and transfer to that uh, recorder the electrical pulses are increased and therefore this is the amplification uh, in the multi photo multiplier uh, tube now this type of detector can be used uh, to measure the how much quantity of the light photon falls on the detector it converted into the number of uh, atoms present in the uh, solution in this way uh, either photo multiplier tube or scintillation detector uh, is used in as a detector in the as now instead of the flame uh, one can uh, transfer these molecular uh, molecules or uh, atoms at the atomic level by using the graphite instead of flame if uh, we can use the electricity for increasing the he heat energy now this is the graphite tube it, this graphite tube can be connected here uh, this is the inlet of the sample we can inlet uh, inserted a sample here and whatever that uh, we increase the temperature of the graphite tube immediately what happened the radiations are coming from the source and at atomic level they absorb and remaining radiation get transmitted and in this way this is the uh, apparatus uh, which is connected to the as a atomizer uh, as a graphite tube now this is the actual graphite tube is connected into the and from this uh, source uh, radiations are coming from this side and goes to uh, this side in this way the graphite tube method can be used instead of the furnace uh, in, instead of the flame as well as in uh, with graphite tube the another method is used the hydride vapor generation now hydride vapors are convert, uh, generated in the uh, tube uh, and we can transfer the ions uh, metal ions into the atomic level another the fourth method can be used as a cold vapor method this method is also utilized to measure the quantity of the uh, metal ion present in the solution now in case of the atomic absorption and atomic emission atomic absorption is just only the uh, from the ground state the uh, atoms goes to the excited state and remain there at this level it absorbs the radiation now at this level it absorbs the radiation it is called as absorption but in case of the uh, emission what happen this atom goes to excited state cross the excited state and again come back to the ground state at that time it emit the radiation in this way it is a emission spectroscopy now in emission spectroscopy what happen there is no need to lamp or a source because whatever the radiations are emitted from the flame they are monitored and in absorption spectroscopy we require the lamp uh, light source which allow to transfer through the flame and this uh, at this flame the excited atom or higher energy level atom they absorb the radiation remaining radiations are monitored in this way how many number of atoms are present in the solution that depend the how much light get absorbed 
as the number of atoms are increases the absorption is also increases and therefore from that we can calculate the uh, absorption for the unknown compounds now this is the uh, schematic diagram of the double beam spectrophotometer as uh, one beam is allowed to pass through the uh, 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 flame and another uh, beam is allowed to pass through the reference beam and therefore with comparison with the standard solution uh, at a time we can measure the concentration of the metal ion present in the solution now these are uh, these are the uh, interferences are there uh, physical interference uh, chemical interference spectral interference and background absorption now in case of physical interference what happen the uh, when we are using a solvent for preparation of the standard and for preparation of the test solution because standard solutions are coming from with the instrument and therefore what type of solvents are used very very high grade solvents are used for for test solution we are using the uh, ar grade uh, solvents and therefore certain uh, change in the viscosity in the solvent therefore it may affect on the physical interference in the same way suppose higher concentration of the water uh, sample is there <coughs> that uh, sample when inserted into the flame total consumption burner it affects on the temperature and therefore it also uh, gives the physical interference in the analysis in case of chemical interference what happen uh, suppose the in the uh, solution ions are there these ions are form the stable compounds and if the stable compounds are formed then what happen stable compounds are formed now due to stable compounds what happen uh, the um, compounds are not transfer easily into the flame and therefore they remain into the solution uh, as a precipitate and therefore uh, our results are very less another uh, chemical interference is the ionization suppose in case of the ionization of the other atom suppose one atom is there and other second atom is there the second atom has a higher ionization power and first atom has a less ionization power but the properties of these two atoms are similar then what happen the uh, this atom uh, the higher concentration ions they are maximum in uh, number and therefore lower atom uh, they are detected less and therefore slightly difference uh, is observed by measurement of the lower ionization atom in this way the chemical interferences are there in case of the spectral interferences what happen uh, suppose two elements are there aluminum and vanadium they have the same spectral lines slightly differ in the uh, for aluminum 308.215 and for vanadium 308.2111 now this difference is very little difference therefore if uh, by the measurement of the aluminum if vanadium is there it get interfere in this way the calcium germanium the cobalt indium like this the zinc uh, iron now these are the elements are there which interfere these elements because of the uh, very equal spectral lines are there and if they are not present then we will get the proper analysis so uh, the operator should know what type of elements are present in the solution therefore he can be uh, amplify these results and he, uh, we get the correct results now in case of the qualitative and quantitative applications of as now as determines the uh, percentage of the metal ion present in the solution and therefore this is the last technique now after that we, we have we don't have any need to analyze this sample again for the by different method and therefore it gives the very better qualitative as well as quantitative analysis it is also used for the uh, trace amount now uh, it can be uh, determined for the metal uh, elements from the agriculture field chemical field pharmaceutical field medicinal uh, clinical biochemistry mineral food drug environmental and many more where we require to make, determine the metal ion solution in that case we uh, can use the as and this type of applications are there <coughs> now this is the one of the method standard addition method for the very trace amount uh, of the uh, substance can be analyzed with the help of uh, this technique now initially what happened in the pore tube we have to take the unknown solution suppose say 10 ml solution is taken then we have to add the standard solution that we know the concentration of uh, the standard solution but the amount of uh, quantity of amount uh, the standard solution is gone increases in first zero quantity then 10 ml then 20 ml then 30 ml this is dilute solution but we know the concentration of that and then we can to equalize the by using the uh, addition of the solvent and then we uh, measure the uh, by using the as and we plot the graph uh, immediately what happened this graph is a straight line 
and when we extrapolate this line the trace amount concentration can be easily by using this method standard addition method now in this way uh, in this topic we uh, discuss about the atomic absorption spectroscopy uh, introduction and theory of atomic absorption spectroscopy instrumentation single beam and double beam spectrophotometer measurement of absorbance of atomic uh, species by as then interferences then qualitative and quantitative applications of as and standard addition method uh, in this way this technique is a very important technique for as an analyst and in many field it can be used thank you